All right, good hey, to go. Uh, we're live. We're Welcome good. to uh, the Domination Camp live online. We've been doing these uh, training camps here uh, around the world, both remotely. This is individual training and training with Taekwondo teams around the world. And then after the 2016 Olympics, we had this really awesome training camp that all of us came together for, uh, for Stephen, that we had to bring in, you know, mobility experts, strength conditioning uh, pieces for the team to make sure he was ready for Rio mindset training and psychologists and all sorts of stuff. We really pulled all our resources together to make sure he was ready for uh, the games. And once we did that, we realized we had something really special. Right? We realized this was way, way cool. And uh, we started taking the show on the road. Well, now we're taking the show to you guys. A uh, couple things first I want to go over. First is obviously mindset. Right now, the mi your mindset is the most important thing you can have in your training. Uh, I always say, if you're here right now, you're not a fair weather athlete. You're not someone who just trains and, oh, the, oh, the school's open or, oh, my, my buddies are there. This is a great time to train, right? You're here because you're someone, if you're serious about your own training and your performance, raise your hand. Let me see. See a show of hands here. We have a couple screens uh, going. Yeah, exactly. This is something that's important to you. So it's important to us to do that. So I love that. We are going to challenge you guys in some new ways today. Obviously, one, just location equipment wise will be very different probably than you've done before. So that's why we're going to help break that down for you. Uh, second thing, new exercises, new approach. Some of the stuff Dr. Han's going to show you here uh, might be very challenging for you, but uh, challenges are where we grow. That's where we stretch at the end and where we grow uh, really big. And then uh, finally, Stephen's going to show you some uh, training from home, really break down. It's probably not going to be super fancy, but he's going to get to the core of what you really, really need. And that's why we're here, right, is to have, uh, to come out of this, moving ahead in our training uh, there. Uh, this is kind of like the off season. There's not going to be a competition for a little bit. Even if things are back to normal, there'll be a little lag in competition. So this is the time to be moving your training, your knowledge, uh, breaking down your own aspects of your uh, game and moving it forward and not just having to be in competition, competition, competition uh, side the whole time. Okay, so that's the last one. And then the final thing is we always say this, if you can leave and we've traveled the world uh, to get one takeaway. My favorite story was before the 2016 games, uh, Steven messaged me and he goes, hey, have you heard about this guy named Wim Hof from Poland? And all he does is work on breathing. And Steven already knows how to breathe. He hasn't died yet, right? Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, but he has a special approach that's gonna help him in his, in his uh, competition. And he said, should I go? And I go, yes, you should go get this one thing before the Olympic trials. And then 30 minutes, he had bought a ticket and was on his way to Poland. No joke, I was like, did it. And I'm like, wow, this, this escalated quickly, but for that one takeaway, it was really important. Okay, uh, so I'm going to turn it over. Uh, let's see, Stephen, anything you want to add? Then I'm going to turn it over to Jayhan. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jayhan next. We'll, he'll get started. Yeah, the only thing I would add is like we always talk about, everybody here really needs to focus on what our standard is. And by that, I mean it's super easy in this situation to go like, yeah, I'm going to kick, but nobody's here. My coach isn't here. Instead of doing 10 kicks, I'm going to do five. And uh, like, I'll kind of warm up lazy. And, you know, not only is that how stupid injuries happen, where like, oh, man, I pulled my hamstring. And somebody goes, well, what were you doing? Like, I was training at home without anybody, and I skipped warming up. I didn't follow the standard that I have at my gym. Or even worse, as far as I'm concerned, you get into the habit of, I'm not blocking, I'm not giving full effort the entire time. And it's like, it's like we talked about before we started the cast, it's like at the end of the day, people are either gonna lose or gain position from this quarantine. And it's like, I, I guarantee you, and I already know you know where I'm going with this, is that at the next tournament, people will be pulling the, well, I lost my first match because I wasn't able to train during the quarantine. I couldn't do my thing, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Well, if everyone could, this is, this has leveled the playing field so much, Bingo. so much. Anyone that's like, oh, they're just lucky. They have a, they have a big facility. They have ex all, this many teammates. It doesn't matter now. It's just down to you and your mindset. That's it. And what do we say about the standard? The standard is the, what is it, Stephen? Yeah, the standard is the standard. What do you expect from yourself? What, what do you allow to happen? Do you let yourself just in these times, let your uh, environment dictate? what you're doing, or do you say, no, I'm gonna come out of this as the champion I'm supposed to be? Uh, awesome, I appreciate it. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Han now. I'm gonna give him 
full view so you can do a little intro too and i'm going to pin your video so everyone can see you uh really nice and then we're rocking thank you doc all right can you hear me tim perfect i got you all right guys um dr jason han um i'm gonna go over some mobility correctives that kind of stuff but at the same time i want to educate you on why it's important you know it, it's fine and dandy to kind of run through a lot of stretches but if we can't make that ample mental application to why this is important in our preparation there's really no use so i will make it specific for rotational taekwondo athletes there is some carryover with a lot of other sports um, right now i work with professional soccer um, mls is on hold for another 30 to 60 days i'm taking care of my athletes remotely i have an office here in pasadena so we take care of clients um, in in person and remotely um, but my main thing is that I educate you to why we do these things. And I'll take you essentially from head to toe and then make that correlation for you um, within your martial art. Okay. So the first thing I'm, we're going to go on is a uh, uh, neck, neck stretching, neck range of motion. And you might ask why. So like Taekwondo, we're primarily a kicking sport. Why do I even need to have good range of motion? So if you think about it, if I'm kicking here, let's say I'm in this stance. I'm literally at 80 degrees of rotation to the left, my neck. And when I kick, I'm 80 degrees of rotation to my right. So let's say I'm lacking range of motion and then you kick and you're not able to turn your head all the way or you're doing a spinning kick and you're not able to spot your, um, your opponent. That's going to throw off your equilibrium. It's going to throw off your center of gravity. And then you always wonder when you're doing a, a, like a nadabang, why are you always going off center? And we're all like, oh, is it my feet? Is it my core? It may even be your neck. So an easy, easy stretch I'm gonna have. So everyone's gonna do this right now. You're gonna turn your head to about 45 degrees to your right, or I don't know how it is on your screen. You're gonna bring your head, you're gonna bring your hand behind your head. You're not gonna crank down. You're going to kind of distract and then bring it down. You should feel a stretch right here on the opposite side. So everyone go ahead and do that. We're going to do a count of about 15 seconds. While you're doing this stretch, take deep breaths. Because if you live in a fight or flight state, you're not, you're not going to have your, your muscles able to relax. So you want a deep breathing. Let it go. Very good. We're going to go to the opposite side. Again, don't crank hard. You should feel a mild stretch, not an aggressive stretch on the opposite side so let's hold that stretch deep breathe nothing should hurt it should just be a mild stretch okay now we're going to look forward instead of turning and going down we're going to grab on the opposite side pull a little bit so you feel a stretch and take that opposite arm and force it down towards the floor we're gonna hold for about 15 seconds or so. Deep breaths. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stretch, and then we're gonna switch, bring it to the opposite side, bring your opposite arm down. Again, mild stretch, no pain. I hear birds, it's wondrous secret <laughs> okay now there is the concept of of mobility and stretching but now those are passive we have to actively take you through those range of motion so you can actually keep it so how many of you out there stretch your hamstrings all day you have great flexibility but when you go and do an axe kick you go like this high right it's not a flexibility issue it's a neuromuscular strength issue that's not allowing you to get there. So same thing with the neck. We can stretch all day, but if we don't actively take it there, we're not gonna be able to keep it. So for this next exercise, we're gonna do a chin tuck, but you're going to figure out how far you can go where you can touch your actual fingers. So if you look at me from the side, right now this is four fingers. If I do three, I can hit three. Two, I can't hit it. So for me, I'm gonna bring three fingers, I'm gonna bring it down, tuck the chin, engage the muscles in the front of your neck. And from there, you're gonna turn, 
keeping the keep keeping the chin tuck as far as you can to the right and as far as you can to the left okay we're going to do that five times to each side so figure out what that distance is for you tuck your chin turn to the right turn to the left right so right now you are training the in intrinsic flexors in the front of your neck to work as you rotate through your range of motion. One more time on each side. Good, because this is important. If you guys are stuck at a computer all day and your posture looks like this, how many of you do that? Raise your hand if your posture looks like this. What happens is all of these muscles get really tight. All of these get really weak. And then when you turn, that's why you feel that crick in your neck. We need to train your neck to be in as neutral as possible. So when you're fighting, I'm trying to think of angle, you're fighting like this. You're not fighting like that. Okay. Therefore, we train good posture and we train proper range of motion. Okay. Next up, we're going to work on thoracic rotation. So this is the portion, your mid upper back. This is where most of the rotation comes when you turn. It's not from your low back, it's coming from your mid upper back. If you ever watched a golfer, if they, if they don't have enough range of motion here, they go through their back and they become Tiger Woods and have two or three back surgeries. So the same thing for you guys as martial artists who are rotating a lot, it's a lot of it's up here. So this is one of my favorite stretches. It's a sideline thoracic rotation stretch. We're gonna lie on your side. Can everyone, can you see me Tim? We good? You're all, you're awesome. So, so you're going to bring your legs up to 90, your hips. We're going to take the opposite hand. We're going to push that down. That's going to anchor the legs down, engage your core. We're going to turn your head first and reach up in a diagonal. Again, breathe. We're going to do that nine more times. Two. Three, four, really try to open up the mid upper back. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You should feel the stretch in the mid upper back, not your lower back. And one more. Okay, go ahead and switch sides. Again, hips up at 90, lock it down with the with the down arm. We're gonna reach up and a diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. So now, like the neck, we want to do something active to keep it. So for this one, we're going to lay on your back. Arms are directly to your side. Can you see that, Tim? So the key is here, palms are up. You're gonna keep your shoulder blades locked to the ground. You're gonna bring your legs up to 90, keeping your core engaged. And when I bring my legs to my left, I don't want my shoulder to pop up. I'm gonna keep my shoulder blades stuck to the ground, abs engage. I'm gonna bring my legs to the side as far as I can without my shoulder popping up. Once you get to that point, use your abs to bring it back. All right, we're gonna do five of those to, to the first side. One. Two, keep that control. Three, keep that shoulder blade stuck to the ground. Four, and five. We're gonna switch sides. One, two, three, four, 
and five. Perfect. So again, that is thoracic rotation, flexibility and activation to keep it. Next up, we're gonna work on a hamstring stretch. So one of the, not I would say complaints or difficulties for some athletes, they have great flexibility here, but when they come here, they can't cross midline. So the hamstring has to be stretched in different ranges of motion. So for this, easy, I'm gonna kneel. I'm gonna have my leg straight out. So instead of me going straight down like you normally would, I'm actually gonna have you rotate towards the hip. You should feel the hamstring stretch at a slightly different angle. So again, you're gonna to rotate towards it. Two, three, four, five. If you need to lean forward a little bit to get a little bit more of a stretch, by, by all means do so. Just don't bend at your back. You're gonna keep your, your back straight as far as you can and then rotate towards six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Go ahead and switch your legs. So back is straight, lean forward at your hips. One, two, three. Really rotate at your hips towards that leg that you're stretching, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Perfect. So again, we, now we have to keep it. So we're gonna line your back. Both legs are straight as much as you can. Arms at your side, pushing down. So you're gonna push down, engage your abs, engage your lats. Keep one down and bring it up. One, two. Keep your back flat to the ground. Three, do not let that thing arch up. Four, five, six, and seven. Now we're gonna switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Perfect. So when we stretch our hamstrings, it's important to, to realize it's not just the hamstring we're stretching. You're actually, you need to stretch the hip flexor on the opposite side. So again, some athletes, they can't do that. Maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's because of this. So we have to be able to look at both sides and diagnose what the situation is. So this is one of my favorite hip flexor quad stretches. I'm gonna be here. Here's the key. You're gonna come forward until you feel a little pressure. You do not, the, the main thing is do not allow your back to arch. A lot of these hip flexors actually attach to your low back. So when you do this, you just give into it. Too many times I'm watching Taekwondo athletes just kind of doing this all day. And you kind of feel, a, right? You kind of feel a stretch here. And what you're actually doing, you're not stretching muscle at all. You're jamming the head of your femur through the capsule. And then you wonder why you have hip pain later on. So you wanna make sure that you're stretching muscle, not the capsule in this situation. So keep your abs engaged, keep your butt tight until you feel a little stretch. Now, hold on to the front leg, grab the back leg. We're gonna hold this for a count of about 20 seconds. Again, keep the abs engaged, squeeze your butt cheek. Breathe. I understand sometimes before training, you wanna go, 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 but these things are essential to your performance. Um, time and time again, we'll switch, go ahead and to the other side. Time and time again, the story is when you're young and up to you, like you're 15 or 16, I never warm up, I never warm up. But once you get to like, what is it, 20 plus, you think, Tim? Oh, yeah. Or yeah. 19, depending on how long you're fighting, you're like, 
Yes. Holy moly. Well, for you and Steven, you guys were like really good when you were young. So that probably happened sooner. <laughs> I didn't get there until like 24 because I did I <laughs> had one fight at a tournament at a time. It's a lot less wear and tear on your body. We well, were probably immobile because you you're stuck in the car all day, right? There you, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> <Touché>. right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So there's a great hip flexor quad stretch. Again, we're going to go to an exercise to actually keep it. So now we're going to do a single leg glute bridge. So the idea is, right, it's separation. So you're going to bring one leg to your chest, the other one, abs tight, dig through your entire foot and lift it up as high as you can. Hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and down. We're going to do four more. You're going to lift. Strengthen your glute and then stretch this hip flexor. One, two, three, four, five. Back down and up. One, two, three, four, five. And down. Engage that core back up. One, two, push, push, push. Three, four, five. Back down. Last one. Up. One. Two, three, four, five, and back down. Now we're gonna switch. Hug the opposite leg to your chest. Again, contact the ground, lift your butt, squeeze your butt, lift up as high as you can. One, two, three, four, five, back down. Up, one, two, three, four, five, back down, back up, one, Two, three, four, five. Back down. Last one. Up. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Now we're going to work on hip rotation. Um, probably this is the most common stretch I see when I say, how do you stretch your glutes? How do you stretch your hips? The pigeon stretch, right? It looks like this. And you're just hanging around, talking to your friends. And then I ask you, where do you feel your stretch? Oh, I feel like right here, <laughs> right? Yep. So is it actually a glute stretch? For a lot of you, it's not. It just becomes a, like a weird hamstring groin stretch. So we want to target the capsule of the hip specifically. So on my hip, my leg, my upper leg's gonna be at 90 degrees, not any farther, okay? From 90 degrees, I'm gonna rotate as far as I can inwards. Block it with the opposite side, rest on my elbows, and then shift my hips to the side. You should feel that stretch deep in the back of your hip. We're gonna hold the stretch for about 20 seconds. Breathe, breathe into it. If that starts, if that area starts to get loose, you can actually search for different areas. So let's go side and down or side and back. You might find another area there. Hold that for a little bit. All right, perfect. Let's strip, let's switch. So again, 90 degrees, rotate in as far as you can, block it with the opposite leg onto your elbows and just shift your hips towards that, um, that leg that you're stretching. These AirPods are kind of amazing, huh? They're so know, good. Gonna... Like, <laughs> it's how like many little things you have in your shop that you get one and it's like, ah, oh, this solved it so quick. Right, exactly. It's like the must have at home, mobility training like a, a list they mm -hmm. can get like could they have that well what else would you like a yoga mat would be great but that little blue pad is awesome well, what else would you say would be like a killer thing for a mobility standpoint i think a foam roller is essential foam roller. um you want to pick one that um your body can handle at least initially um so there's there's a lot of theories on yep exactly just like what what coach tim's holding up um it's not only does it too late, Steven, help. too late. <laughs> too not late. only does it help massage your muscles, it actually allows your body to start to 
adapt to pressure, adapt to stresses. Because a lot of times it's like, you're tight for an underlying reason. Is it because I have not? Or is it because I'm not able to um, recover from the stress that it's given? You know, so we're, when you're on a foam roller, Dr. Mark Chang's a, a good friend of mine. And then his big thing is breathing deep and letting go into, into whatever is giving you the soft tissue. Then you're actually training your body to get out of this fight or flight sympathetic state because that's where we are all the time. But when you realize when you're fighting, you're there, yep. you can't function. It's like the guy comes in and, or the guy or the girl comes and you're like, hey, I wanted to go, but I couldn't. Yes. I, so, I was like, how come I gassed out in the first 10 seconds? Right. right? Cause you're like, I mean, yeah, like I'm gonna talk about it in the conditioning, but this is right now sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system state for everyone here is gonna dictate so much of their their progress or their inhibitions now, I think, right? Right, so you know, even with these stretches, it seems boring sometimes and this and that, but you're actually getting yourself in state for training. You know, if you come in all wound up, you had a bad day at work and a bad day at school, and you come in, you can't expect to train at your best. Yeah. You have to be able to come in, shut down whatever needs to be shut down, turn on whatever needs to be turned on in order to properly be there. And I think that is the difference between um, a lot of the athletes that are successful and those that aren't, those that have great athletic ability, but how come they weren't able to carry that over into um, the ring? Because they look great in practice, but when it comes to, to fight day or match day, they're not able to control their nerves. They're not able to hone into the things that they were focused on before. And that is a detriment to a lot of athletes that we see over the years. So these things, as far as um, stretching, stretching mobility and correctives are great, but it's these nuances to how you do them, the speed at which you do them, and the delivery at, at which you do them to actually carry over to your actual fighting. Yep. Um, anything to add to that? No, that I, uh, you, you said it best. So that, yeah, but, but we said it started with mindset, and that is like we're talking on deeper levels than people uh, think or maybe recognize. But we'll keep hitting on this over the, over the course of the session. All right. So we're going to, we took that passive stretch. Now we're going to make it an active. So we're going to sit here. Okay. Try to bring this knee down and this knee up. I mean, both knees down essentially. Some of you that have a lack of mobility, you may need to, you may need a little, need a little help with your arms, which is totally fine. But what I want you to do is try to do it as actively as possible. Don't just stretch. I need you to turn as far as you can. If you need help, use your abs, use your hip flexors to bring you down, hinge you down as far as you can. Breathe, come back up. You're gonna rotate as far as you can. So a lot of you right now are probably cramping right here. If you are, raise your hand. I'm cramping a little bit. Yeah. But then when you cramp, Use your mind to tell your body to relax, right? Let you go there. Turn to the opposite side. Down. Back up. Turn. We're going to go one more. Turn. Hinge down at your hips. If you get really good at this, you hold a little kettlebell. Back up. Or dumbbell. Or big can of soup, whatever you got at home right now. <laughs> so you're gonna, now you're going to bring your legs up. You are going to sit up tall as you can. Keep your abs tight. You're going to bring your knees towards the ground. Force them down. One, two, three, four, five, and back up. Because how often are we doing this in class? That's a passive stretch. I need you here. I need you to force your knees down. One, two, three, four, five, back up. Use your glutes to bring it down. One, two, three four, five, back down. Now we're gonna rotate to the opposite side. So again, up as tall as you can, rotate and hinge down. One, two, three, back up, turn. One, two, three, turn. One, two, three, back up. One, two, three, last one. One, two, three and back up one two three okay we have two more sets of these of of areas so next up we're going to tackle the adductor or your groin 
So most often we do splits like this, right? We're hanging all day, we're talking to our friends like that. But this stretch is great for your groin, but it doesn't always necessarily translate to if you're trying to side kick. If you're side kicking, you have to be purely in this plane. So we need to, tr we need to train your hips how to stretch your adductors in that plane. So for here, I'm gonna go in this position until I feel a little bit of a stretch. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna keep my back in neutral, my abs engaged. Once I have that stretch, I'm going to rock back, back and forth. So here's a key. As you're doing so, do not do this. That's why, so let's say I stretch like this all day. I'm stretching my, I'm stretching my groin, just like this. But then you do a side kick and you look like this. Because you're stretching, you're training yourself to kick in that manner instead of here where it's perfectly straight. So I want you to abs engaged, get that stretch, and then rock back, keeping them engaged here. That's three. That's four. And that's five. Okay, we're gonna switch sides. One. Breathe. Two. Three, four, and five. So here's a great corrective activation to, to keep this. So when you're kicking, it's not just stretching here. It is actually strengthening the upper part of this leg and strengthening the lateral core right here, okay? So we're going to do a side plank on your knees to start. So my knees are bent to 90. I'm gonna bring my hips forward so they're in neutral instead of back here. So I'm gonna bring my hips forward, lift up. I'm engaging my lateral core here. My leg is here, I'm gonna raise up. I'm gonna go for 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You should feel this. And you should feel that. Now we're going to go to the opposite side. So again, bring your hips forward, lift. Keep, even keep your head in neutral. Don't, don't bring it like this. Keep it in neutral. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. Last but not least, we gotta get those ankles flexible. So, kneeling, foot planted on the floor. I'm gonna bring my knee forward as far as you can, five times, but here's the key. As you come forward, do not let your heel come up. You wanna keep your heel straight on the ground, okay? So we're gonna go five, directly forward. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna keep the foot there, but angle your knee a little bit to the inside. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna go a little bit to the outside. We're athletes here, so we need our, our bodies to kind of move in certain planes that normal people can't do. Three, four, and five, okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. Foot planted down. One, two, three, four, five. Angle in, one, two, if three, four, and five. And now to the outside, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, this is the last exercise. We're gonna put it all together. So, start feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. I'm gonna hinge at my hips. That's part one. 
keeping my feet on the ground, not turning out, keeping my knees in line over my feet. I'm gonna squat down as far as you can. Keeping your back straight. From there, just lift your hips, feel that hamstring, abs engaged, back down. Up, down, up, down. Okay, now we're gonna have one arm in um, between, uh, underneath the knee. You're gonna reach with the opposite arm. Reach, reach, reach. Reach, reach, reach. Both arms up and stand up. Okay, we're gonna hinge, squat, reach, reach, reach with both and stand up. One more for me. Squat down. I mean, bend forward, squat down, raise up, raise up. Both arms, stand up. Awesome. All right, great job, everyone. So again, simple, essential, and they're gonna get you ready to get you, get your body ready and get you in state with this next part with Coach Tim. Keep it up, guys. Yeah, buddy, I wanna do this. Let me see if I can do something for you. Uh, so I unmute all. Big big round of applause there. On the audience. Woo! Hey, water. Woo! Yeah, buddy. And that was that was great. I'm gonna meet everyone now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All again. There you go. And I will mute you. Okay. So I, I think you can see now. Let me pin my video here. You can see why I absolutely love working with Dr. Han. It was funny. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Stephen Landon messaged me, and we go. He goes, how does he make it look so simple every time, right? It was clear that stuff was advanced, but uh, I'll unmute you, I'll unmute Steven. It was advanced stuff, right? Like, how many of you do that, other than if you're like a remote client, how many of you are doing that with that approach daily? And be honest, right? That's, you know, and even then, it, right? So that's, that's hard stuff, but he made it so clear is what I love about that. That's really high level concepts, but I'm like, here's a game plan forward. Uh, right, so, so th thank you, Doc. And if you got a jam, I, I know you have uh, a new. No, book. I want I want to watch all this good stuff. I, I've made time, and then so, so it's all good. I'm gonna be here. Hey, th thank you, brother. Uh, well, it fitted perfectly with the the hip and the squat mobility. Uh, we're gonna do some strengthening and some speed work that you can do from home here. Uh, stuff. So we're not gonna be doing. I see a lot of people where you're at. You're in living rooms. You're in small. You're like Mark in Canada. He's, he's got a small workout room. Uh, in the garage there or whatnot. So we're gonna try and do things that fit with where you're at. Um, hopefully you can see my stuff here. It might cut off my head, but I never really liked my head in the first place. So everyone's gone through the squatting now. We wanna now, our body's ready to train. Raise your hand if you feel like you're ready to train now. Jehan got you in state, we're ready to push. That, that's right, we're ready to start making some gains. Uh, this type of year is like the off season right now. There's no competition coming up for a bit. So if we were a day out of the competition, right, all our energy is getting ready to compete. We're not trying to learn new stuff. We're not trying to push some of the new barriers or get uh, you know, frustrated. Hey, the coach goes, learn this new technique. And you're like, I fight in three minutes. That's because the coach is nervous, so they don't feel prepared. So they think they have to tell you something because uh, they didn't do the work and the whole thing unravels versus getting an athlete in state to go crush it. Well, right now, I want you guys in state to be stretched, to be learning some new skills. Uh, the stronger and faster we can get, the better just the odds of us uh, in, succeeding in any sport are really high. Uh, me and Coach Hiroshi had that talk all the time about his daughter, uh, Trinity, who, you know, we'll see when the Olympics are. It might be one more year, which she's younger. It actually might work out really cool for, uh, for her. She'll be uh, getting closer to her peak, but she's on the U.S. karate national team. And uh, she's the representative for the U.S. to try out for Tokyo. But we, that's our focus even with her. She's a stud, still better athlete, stronger mindset, push her out there. And we know that that's what we can do and we can get her in the right place to, to crush it. But we have, this is the foundation. If we try and load you up, if I went first and then we put uh, Dr. Han on, you see how that'd be an issue? 
So I'm gonna push it a little like this now, but you'd be coming in, you're like, I have this issue in my back, and now it gets doubly worse and triply worse. So there's a sequence to these things, it's mindset, get our body prepared, now we can do some of the things to improve our training that we're gonna do. And then next up after that, then Steven's gonna actually apply it to the sport. So there's a method to all this madness. The first one I wanna do, we're gonna go over squatting and jumping, which is great because where uh, Dr. Han finished was with the squat mobility. Uh, so everyone can see me here, give me a thumbs up if you can see me and we're good. All right, four things I want us to accomplish when we squat. Number one, and you can say it out loud, it helps if you do it at home, the weight stays in your heels. Right, so here, we're gonna, as we squat down, the weight stays on our heels. We don't, we're not gonna do this when we go, right? Our hips go back, so you try to lift me, your hips are gonna go back, and our knees are gonna stay in line with our toes. Let's do those three things, okay? We'll keep it simple for home. So weight in your heels, right? Hips are back, so if this is our first motion, right? Not at the knees, and again, I like to show this, but I'm not squatting here. Pretty good at 40, I can do that, right, Dr. Han? That's not bad. I'll have to come see you for, for some work soon, though, after I do, if I do that any more times. All right, so this is a, a, my thing. We're going to do three seconds down and one second up. As you go down, push your hands away. So again, weight in your heels, knees uh, over your toes, hips are back. Ready? On my count, three seconds down and one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and up. Nice and easy. You look great. Ready? One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and up. I'll face this way and one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and up. And we'll go this side, ready, two more, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and up. Last one, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. Hold and up. Because Dr. Hong got you in such a great place, that feel a little easier than hopefully normal, right? I'm gonna go on gallery view so I can see everyone here. See your beautiful faces. Was that easier, just even those basic squats, was that easier than normal? Right, on a cold Sunday, that's from Dr. Han. I, I just set a couple points of performance. That's how valuable that is. Think about that now in a competition. You're trying to kick to the face. You're using all your energy, and it's taking you 80 or 90% of your effort to get that kick to go that score. That means you're working at such a high threshold to go every time, right? To score, we know when we push that hard, it takes a lot of time to recover. So the easier we can make things, if, I, if you can kick to the face and it's only 50% of your effort versus that, uh, that, that reaction, this, and but everyone try this. Everyone go and clench your jaw really hard. Do this, go. Do that, right? That's like a telltale sign we're in a sympathetic nervous system state. Did you breathe? Do this again, real tight. Are you breathing? Nope. Your muscles are tight. Now feel your breathing right away. You're breathing hard. You didn't do anything. So when we talk about that, when Dr. Ron is talking about performance and being in a parasympathetic nervous system state, not fight or flight, not emotionally charged. A lot of people were emotionally charged this week. Crazy things are happening, I get it. We gotta get ourselves in a place our body can train. Okay, so uh, rant over there. Next thing, if we wanna produce some force, we have to be able to absorb force. All right, again. Uh, I'm going to steal. I'm basically going to be saying all Dr. Hahn's greatest hits here. I've been, I've been stealing them for years. But it's not the acceleration against athletes, it's deceleration, right? Outside of non contact injuries, it's when people are stopping, is when they hurt themselves. Look in Taekwondo. It's not the jumping that hurts people on their knees. When is it? It's the landing, right? So we can't land, we can't do anything. I have, I have my props here on camera. I'm going to take them off camera. Uh, there, but we can't land. So we're gonna do some speed production work and some force production work, but if I can't have you absorb, all I'm doing is giving you a race car that goes 200 miles an hour with no brakes. So here's our drill. We're gonna do five times with both legs, and then we're gonna do single leg right, single leg left five times. So follow along with me. The drill goes like this. This is not our first rep. It's gonna go squat down, we're gonna jump up, and I'm gonna stick the landing, okay? Ready, squat, so everyone follow me on my count. And one, squat down, ready, and jump, and stick. When you freeze on that catch. No wobble, no like, here, if you're doing this, that's a sign I want you just to squat. You don't, you haven't earned the ability to jump yet and produce force. There's nothing wrong with that, but you probably know, you probably know, oh, I have this knee issue or is whatever. So again, number three, ready, down, squat down, squat down, jump high, up, and catch. Good, ready, awesome, and stick that. And again, I don't want, I see a little bit of, 
wobble at the end, tight. Two more down, ready, jump up, fix, catch. Okay, two more now. I wanna jump, I wanna land single leg. Okay, so it's gonna go squat down and land just on your right leg. Down, squat down, and up, and catch. Right there, nice and sick. Now left leg. Okay, ready, squat down, and up, and freeze, right there. When we do this, see how I'm centered, my chest is over my knee, over my foot. I'm not like all open exposed. We're right here. We call this organized position. Everything's in alignment here. That's where I want to be. Okay, feeling good? Thumbs up if we're on camera. Awesome, I love it. Let's do it a little more because Taekwondo is not necessarily what we call a bilateral sport, meaning both legs move at the same time. Sometimes that happens, but it's a lot of one, two, one same leg type movement. So this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. This position here. Actually, let's go over that real quick. We haven't gone over, uh, call this the athletic snap down position. Try this with a single leg. So everyone get one on one leg. And when I say go, I just want you to go here to your jumping position and freeze, right? We don't jump like this. That's a bad position to jump from. Chest is up. So again, when I do this, it's gonna look like this. Just stop right here. Okay, follow me, ready? I'm gonna do it fast. And one leg on the ground. And go, freeze. Good, relax again. And go, freeze. That's the position. What position is this similar to? Ah, pretty similar here, right? No one kicks. And again, don't be that person in the video that fights like, fights like this. I'll come to your home. I'll, I'll fly, even with a, a fly restriction, I'll come to your home and uh, make sure that stops. So we're in this position here is similar to the things we're doing in sport. Now let's try the other leg now. Right now, I want single leg. It's just going to go from here to freeze, and that position's right here. And go, single leg freeze. Boom. Right there, that's where we're going to jump from. And one more time, and go. Right here. Now let's put that together. We're starting to build and it's a little progression. The drill goes like this. I'm gonna say snap down, you're gonna freeze. I'm gonna say jump up and stick. Got it? I'm gonna say snap down, freeze that position, let your body really know neuromuscularly from your head, through all your muscles through your body, where you're supposed to be. Okay, ready? So it's gonna say snap down, then jump. When you jump, you're gonna stick the same position. I shouldn't be able to tell if you started or just finished the drill. But this position's the same. All right, ready, follow me, and snap down. Ready, and jump, up high, and stick. Awesome, other leg, ready, other side. Ready, and snap down, fast. And jump, up, and stick. Ah, uh, I was a little wobbly on that one. Okay, right leg again, one more time. Ready, and snap down, fast. Tight, 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 and jump, up. And stick. Okay, other side, last one. We're gonna get into something else. Ready, and snap down fast. And jump and stick, go up. Okay, cool. Thumbs up, we're following along. Starting to breathe a little more, we're starting to get ready. We feel how this is starting to feel a little more like, uh, we call it like, it's all training. People think maybe this is training. I'm telling you, everything we're doing is training. From here, we're gonna do five of these now. And it looks like this, five in a row. From snap down position, single leg, up one, two. I'm catching every time. And catch. Every time, see I'm hitting that same exact position. That same position. Okay, one of the things I notice when people are fresh, and be honest, when you're fresh in the fight, whose kicks are accurate at the start of a fight? You're doing good to so start, you're fresh. Who feels like at the end of the fight, you can get that to exactly where you want it? Every time in the finals of the Olympics. Can you do it? Now, a couple people, yeah, it's hard. That's what I want you to do. I want you to be so dialed in with your body and your mind that you're not having to waste energy thinking about that. Right? I'm talking about it while I'm doing it because I want to be that in control of the movement. You can do it. Same thing in competition. If you're busy thinking, Okay, make sure and really raise your knee up high, Tim. I, I, I need to be thinking about my opponent. Okay, so here we go. I mean, five times. Jump with me, and it's going to be jump and stick. Jump and stick. So there's a small freeze every time. As high as you can. Thumbs up. We got it. All right, here we go. On my count, 
just five on your own and snap down and go. One, two, three, and push. Push against the ground and five and six. And hold, hold, hold. Awesome. Go ahead and relax. And switch sides. You don't have to switch sides. I'm just doing it so you have to get different views. You can just face however you want, I guess. Left leg, same thing. When I'm doing this, I'm not pulling up off the ground. I'm not going, I'm not going, right? I'm not just trying to pop off the ground. I'm pushing in to the ground, my ankle, my knee, and my hip will all be extended, right? Am I jumping through my heel or the balls of my feet? Balls of my feet, right? Everyone try to try and get your weight in your heels, only your heels, and try and jump. Can't do it. Watch, now push through the balls of your feet easily. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason why when we fight, there are certain positions we're in. And why this one, you know, right? Inherently a defensive position when you're waiting through your heels because our heel is our break. Okay, left side, here we go. Five times and snap down. Breathe it, good, and five times. Jump, pause, and go. Four, oh, go lock down, and five. And hold it, and hold it, and very good. Okay, let's uh, transition here. The next part I want to do, start doing some movement with it now. Um, I have my dots. The first one we're going to do is side to side. So I have four dots. Let me see. I think I need to change my camera a little further back so you guys can see here. There you go. I have four dots. So just imagine for you guys, there's four dots around you. Okay, so you're going to go boom, you're in the middle of a square. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so the first one, we're going to go top right and back. Top left and back, back right and back, back left and back. So one, two, three, and four. And if you get the order wrong, it's not the worst thing in the world. What we're gonna do here is we're only gonna pause in the middle now. So we're adding a couple things. We're adding direction now. Again, in fighting, that's super important to be able to do. And then we're also gonna add uh, a ballistic or a rebounding uh, catch when we go outside. So meaning before we were gonna jump and stick, now it's gonna go one and back. And I'm pausing here, All right? Out and back. Okay, so I'm only pausing in the middle. We're gonna try and go around the fast jump out. So I hit the ground, because I'm organized, I'm not letting my leg reach out. I'm gonna hear boom and back in the center. And every time I'm in what position, say it with me, my athletic position, I'm in that snap down, that same, I go from here, I'm finding that every time. So you guys, when you fight, have a center to come back to. Okay, here we go. On my count, I say one, I'm gonna say top right, two top left, three back right, three back left. All right, thumbs up if we're ready. I love it, I love the energy, here we go. And ready, top right, one. Good, oh, I've been following a little ready. And top left, two, out, back. Now backwards to the back right, three. Uh, a little long pause for me there. And one more back right, back up four, and back and in. Okay, good. Left side now, same idea. We're gonna go top left, top right, back left, back right. Okay, pausing only in the middle. As soon as we're out, boom. Anticipate that. Okay, here we go on my count and top left. Good, and top right, one, two, and back left. One, and only pausing here. Oh, I sit on my dots. And one more time, back right. One, and two. Okay, do you guys see what I did on that one? You see what happened? I know you're busy doing it. Here's what happened for me, why that was, I'd say that would be something less than ideal. I jumped backwards here, and I wasn't ready. So I had a quick pause, and I came back in. These drills are gonna help make you more athletic, to help increase your reaction time. But ultimately, those are neural connections we're trying to work. And here's what I mean by that. That you don't get extra points in Taekwondo for being good at Tim's dot drill. I wish it was. I wish you could start the fight two to nothing. 
like you show the video and you're like, yeah, you gotta check this out. I crushed this drill, man. It was really great, but you don't. So what's the benefit? Obviously athleticism, but it's mindset first. And if we really believe that, what I want you to do, we're gonna do it one more time, is when we're going back, I'm not going back to the dot. I'm making the connection that this is the fight, something's coming and I've got to anticipate not only getting out, the timing of the kick coming down to come back in. Or again, if it's, you know, this is my only job I'm gonna to make today. Or if it's today's fight, you're gonna go back and do this. I don't know. Like I said, so I get one, I'm, I'm old, I'm an old cranky man. I get one, I get one to make Dr. Han laugh. That's the idea. I'm using this to anticipate. If we had more room, and we were doing cone drills, right? I'm running up. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Find where I decelerate in advance. I'm not trying to get here and go, I should slow down. That's silly, right? I'm trying to go fast, know that in three dimensional space, I have to be with my right foot here, have my hips dropped to transition lateral. And that's the biggest benefit for fighting you can do with these, is putting that in the mindset you need to apply it in the ring. You get that? The same way Dr. Han said, oh, is this drill passive or is it active? The same idea. I want your mindset active. So we're gonna do this drill one more time. We're gonna go bam, bam. I want you to anticipate going out and back. So when you're in the air, what are you thinking? Oh man, I'm in the air, this is pretty cool. No, you're thinking, get that foot on the ground, be ready to push against the ground, come back in the center and find my spot. That's a lot to ask, but it's a hard sport. Okay, here we go. And right leg snap down. Here we go, and top right, go. One, two, ah, uh, better already, even for me. Ready, top left, go. Out, back, and back right. This one got me last time. And go, out, back, and back left. Ready, go. There we go, awesome job. I should have held it. And left leg, here we go. Last one of these, ready, push against the ground. And snap down, find a spot. Top left and go. One, two. Excellent. Keep organized right here. Top right, go. One, two. No extra hopping. You see me, I shouldn't be doing this. Back left and go. Excellent. This one got me last time. Last one, I want out, back in, and freeze. And go. Ah, I reached, I reached, I did that one. Got me two times in a row. So you get the idea there of where we're going with this. Those are some speed drills you can do from home. The next part, more a couple strengthening pieces before we kick. Everyone, if you have a chair, a couch, a partner, uh, anything you need there, you can do this without anything, but it's a little harder. So go ahead and grab that. Normally, I do these drills with a demo. I have to do them and talk at the same time. But uh, maybe it starts off my training for the for the Masters Games 2021. Who knows? Maybe Nationals 2021. So, if you go to Dr. Han stuff, he was talking about the ability to split, right? Meaning, uh, and Jay Han, you can talk about that one more time real quick. Uh, when you're doing the single leg back and you do your uh, unilateral on your back, you don't want the back to arch. Right. Now you break that out one more time how that's important for Taekwondo because I'm going to do rear foot elevated split squat and, some, and single leg deadlift. Okay. So in general, guys, like I said before, this up leg is a hamstring stretch, but it's also a stretch of the lower leg. I mean, of the hip flexor on the opposite side. And to take it even a little bit deeper, when, when Tim gives you like a Bulgarian split squat and you guys are arching your back like this, yeah, you're strengthening your legs, but you're not strengthening the whole system. So a lot of times when, when you're complaining that you don't have the flexibility or you always have to stretch in order to be flexible, it probably means you have an underlying uh, trunk or core stability issue. So I always make the analogy that um, if I'm walking on this floor here, I can move. It's really easy. I feel fluid. But if I were, gonna, if I were to walk on an ice rink or a frozen lake, what does your body automatically do? It holds on. It walks really gingerly, right? And that's essentially what your body's doing. Okay. So in order to have good, like split flexibility, act kick flexibility, yes, you need mobility there, but you also need to make sure that this is solid. So when you do the split squat, 
you're not arching your back. You're keeping this tight and coming down, coming down through this hip, and you're actually stretching the opposite hip, which you will see in Tim's video. Thanks, Doc. You you've been squatting, man. Your your uh, legs looking legs looking strong, my man. It's dad bod, man. I, I get 40 it. Plus. I Forty get plus. Forty plus. There's two variations we're gonna do here. If you have any issues, we're starting off with a split squat. That's just our feet, uh, you know, a little more than shoulder width apart. And keep your chest up, and we just drift down. It's not forward. I actually have my back knee to come back just a little here. Split squat. So again, just be careful. Make sure everyone's safe at home. The drill is going to be rear foot elevated split squat, aka Bulgarian split squat, aka a drill that a name that everyone wants to name it. We're going to start calling things just uh, this is the juice squat. This is the juice. These are juice push-ups. I'm just going to brand everything. Uh, so the drill is, this chair might be a little high, like Jay said. Uh, people, I'll see sometimes, they'll go, look how good I'm doing on this drill. They'll raise their back foot up. The same thing. Now, see, I'm in that broken position here. I'm down. That's not a progression for this. Right? Maybe if you're a figure skater. I don't know. I don't train figure skating. But even then, you know, they do that thing where they're here. I still don't think it's a progression. So it should be low. So keep your body upright. So you get one foot out, the other foot here. All right, we want to do it so our knees, again, we're not trying to come forward here. So I come back. So single leg strengthening. Try not to push on the leg on the chair. I'll switch legs just a little bit easier for you to see where I'm at. That's going to come back. And now look at my, look at this knee here. My knee is on the leg. It doesn't go down. It's actually going to go backwards. See that? So this, this ankle, I busted up my ankle really good uh, a year ago. I was trying to do a, a no-handed cartwheel in the backyard with my sister, and I didn't get the lift I needed off the grass. And uh, so I can't do anything. I couldn't run time with any sort of forward anterior flexion, so all I could do is come back. So I got good at these. So get on this position. It's going to be three seconds down, everyone one leg up. Be three seconds down. We're going to hold for a second. When we stand up on the up, it's going to go one, 1,000. 2,000, 3,000, boom. We're pushing fast here and then slowly back down. Thumbs up if we got it. Eight times on this right leg, ready. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, and he's going back through 1,000, hold and up. And it's this leg pushing. I'm not pushing off my foot at all on the chair. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, hold, stand. Good. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, hold, stand. Good. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, Hold and stand fast. And one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Last one, hold it tight, hold it tight, and stand. Awesome, good. So I'm gonna switch sides now. For me on the camera, you might just switch legs on the couch. Uh, you can do this with a buddy holding your foot here. You can do it with a bench, a chair, uh, there's, you know, uh, the amount of videos I've seen of, of uh, chair rows and things right now for people training at home is awesome, I like the ingenuity. So other leg up. Pump it out and come back here. And again, what I want was you see this knee, my left knee, you're gonna see it go back and up. Did I already do that leg? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm gonna face this way again. I don't wanna get one, one big leg, one small leg. So again, this leg here, you're gonna see it go back and down. On my count, ready, and one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, and up. Good, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, and up. Time. Watch this and go back. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, up, and one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Hold, up. One more time. You can wait these if you wanted, but thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, and up. Awesome, awesome. The progression from here, if those were good, we would go to no chair. And you can try this with me. What I want you to do: your chest is going to go over a single leg over the knee that's bent okay so it's a it's not a full single leg squat i would say that would be like back here and up this one's going to be here like chest over okay so it's that athletic position we're finding in i don't want your power to be limited here that but that's the end range of your power i want to stretch that out so when you're in this athletic position here in your fight you're not now at 80 or 90 percent of your ability you have in-range power that goes far beyond those normal positions, okay? That's the idea in our sport I wanna focus on. So from here, chest is gonna go, if it's my right leg, my chest goes towards my right knee. 
what that does is it creates torque over the glute and the quad and the hamstring here. So follow me, just with both legs, you could try it or keep one foot on the ground easily. And this goes here and up. Now take that foot off the ground. And it's gonna stay back, just like this. It's easy. All right, so from here, let's see where I can see a good angle. It is down, now bring your chest toward that knee and go down, 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 down. And hold and stand. Yeah, single leg squat, not bad, right? You guys are doing good. Let's do five of those on my count. Bring it down, the further you can go, the better. If you do need a second leg on the ground, it's just a staggered stance, almost like an RDL, really. So you can call them whatever you want. But this one's gonna have a little more knee bend than maybe a traditional RDL would allow. So from here, and go ahead and bend, down, down, down tight. And one, we got chest up a little more than I showed. Down, 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 down. Two, one more time, down nice and controlled. We're not moving fast. Okay, good. The next one we're gonna do this is the last set, we're gonna move on. Now we're gonna jump at the end. We're gonna jump at the end here. So it's gonna go down, single leg, down, 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 and push up and catch. Okay, so it's a progression from, see how we built this whole thing out? It was one kind of training concept. Now we have one big tool you can apply. On my count, ready, single leg back, chest over the knee, and we're gonna pause. Ready, down, 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 load, load that loop up, and jump and catch, one. Awesome, ah, I saw someone fall. We gotta keep it nice and tight, I'm watching. Ready, and two, down, 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 load. Jump and catch, jump, catch. Two, ah, better. Right again, not with a straight leg, we're bouncing, we're landing here. One more time, right leg or first leg, and bend, 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 hold. And three, up, and catch. Awesome, left leg, here we go. Other side, these are our last three, and load, 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 hold it tight, and jump and catch, one. Ah, uh, you see I was a little off, you saw me, I mean, I didn't have, I wasn't organized well, I need to keep chest over the knee more. Ready? And two, down, 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 down. And jump, catch, one, and two, a little on my heel. My trusty left leg is staying on me. Right when I, right when I needed you the most, what did I ever do to you? Last one at home, I want to see your biggest jump. And load, 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 single leg, pause, and go. Awesome, okay. So last thing now, we did that whole progression. Take you back to that first drill we did of just jump and catch. Three times right, three times left. What I want to see is progression from the start to the finish. Okay, here we go. Right leg and snap down right here. Just quarter squat and jump and catch. One, high, should be higher. Ready, two, up, catch, and three up, and catch. Awesome left leg, here we go, ready? And organize, snap down, and one, up high, better already. Two, up, catch, and three, no wobbles, up, and catch. High fives all around, let's go back to gallery view. Uh, so does that make sense how we broke down from Dr. Han's intro into one specific progression here? of single leg strengthening. So many variations we can take with it. Uh, we do it again next week, might do some hurdle hops, might do some jumping, might do some bounding. This is something you can do in your living room at home. A lot of stuff. Uh, let me give Jehan and Steven uh, audio privs. Anything to add you guys on, on that stuff? Anything you noticed or saw or saw from people or yourself? No, I think just, just overall, hopefully it makes sense why you do the mobility and the activation sequences beforehand. Um, unless you're Superman, it's, it's, uh, it's really hard to just kind of jump into those kind of things. And that's, and that's when you get hurt. Right? So you, again, you have to prep your body for functional movement and then make sure that your technique is good before you start to add load. Um, I always use the term, do not load dysfunction. So if, it, if you're squatting, your knees are coming all the way in, and then you add some type of weight on top of it, that's why you end up with hip, knee, ankle pain. So, you know, just be safe, guys. Now you don't want to look like the, the favelas in Brazil. Bad first house, the second story, the third story add-on, right? Right, right, right. All right, Stephen, go ahead, buddy. Uh, that's, so that's how that works, guys. Uh, Stephen, uh, anything you want to add on to that before we kick it over to you, my friend? I mean, I think you guys said it. I'd just be retreading the same ground, but like particularly with that dot drill, it's what we talked about. Of, having the intent in everything that you do. It's like, yeah, it's easy to look at that drill and be like, not only is it difficult, but it's also kind of fun. Guess what? It has direct impact on what we're about to work on of, oh, I need to kick? Okay, I gotta get into the right distance as fast as I can. And it's like, 
it directly applies to that. Awesome. Well, let's take it over. Uh, Stephen Landon, if you don't know, was 2002 U.S. Junior National Team member. Now let's turn yeah. it over to you, sir. Oh, thank he's you so much. He's Olympian. He's been on the national team more than everyone here combined. So uh, we're grateful to work with you. And I, if you haven't heard this story yet, I've told it too many times that his first year on the national team was he was heavyweight, but he was only 17. So his mom had to come in and sign his paperwork for him. I just think of like Mike Tyson having his mom sign a waiver. Like, here you go, Iron Mike. Don't, don't, don't break his jaw. Like, so we've, we've uh, been for a long time. Let's turn it over to you. We're grateful to have you here. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna pin you. I'm gonna give you full screen. All right. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, guys, uh, let's take a second and really be grateful here because not only did Dr. Han crush it with, uh, I've been a remote coaching client with Tim for forever now. And it's like, I was super excited whenever I heard Dr. Han was getting on because it's like, there were a couple of things that I actively do now, but it's like, when he goes through some of those cues and everything like that, it's like, oh man, I need to remember to do that. Or there's three or four things that I wrote down today because I learned those things from sitting here. And it's like, uh, part of the reason why the three of us, Juice Compound, Domination Camp, all of that stuff works so well is that we all have that student mentality. And I think we just need to be sure, uh, whether it's a personal note afterwards, whatever, shout it out, and definitely let Dr. Han know, uh, Dr. Han and Tim, how incredible this stuff is. So uh, that being said, we took care of mobility, we primed our bodies, we started taking care of some strength and conditioning and stuff. And one of the big mistakes that I tend to see is, let me close out this chat, uh, one, one of the big mistakes I tend to see will be uh, watching people trying to take care of strength and conditioning and mobility during their, during their training session. It's like, those are their own things. Like, you should definitely be doing mobility at the start of every workout, whether it's a lift or whether it's your Taekwondo training. But keep in mind, that, that, that's the entry pass to get into our actual training. The strength and conditioning, yeah, some of it's fine in, in your Taekwondo training and Taekwondo practice, but what we need to remember is that's where we get more mobile, stronger, and better conditioning. Taekwondo training needs to be where we go, uh, where we go to focus on our sport specifically, right? So it's like, you don't want to, you see little kids doing it all the time where it's like, oh, at Taekwondo training today, I, I did the run, jump over six bags, flying sidekick. And it's like, no, like Taekwondo training should be super sharp and hyper-focused, just like the rest of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, so for example, uh, I, I love seeing people do the, well, my workout's three hours long. And it's like, Tim always brings this up whenever we do seminars and it's like, how long is my workout? And I'll have people guess just crazy stuff of like, I bet you work out three times, four hours a day. And it's like, no, like a super sharp hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, but it's hyper focused. It's like, it goes back to that standard we talked about earlier. Uh, so that being said, we're gonna carry this standard over. We're gonna work hyper focused on one really specific thing. We're gonna go beginner, intermediate, advanced, offense, then some defense, and then we'll close it out. Hyper focused, because again, this is one of those things during this time off when other people are sitting there chowing down and oh man i don't know what to do i'm so bored well this is where that taekwondo training comes in if we can be hyper focused and really make a big impact on our technical skills here so um we should all still be warm i talked there for just a minute uh that being said we're going to go through just a real quick like two three minute warm up just to get the heart rate going again because uh, where I'm going to run you through is exactly what I do before a match, because we've all been through that situation where you warm up in the holding area, you walk over the hand you your dado chest guard, and then you stand there for 10 minutes. All right. Oh, now it's time to fight. And then that first round, people are just lagging. Well, that's not us anymore. So we're going to go through that real quick warm up of, okay, it's two minutes until I start my fight. So let's get, make sure that heart rate's going again. So real quick, make sure you have some room. Nice, easy. You're going to give me 10 calf raises. Staying nice and tall, core nice and tight. So up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, nice. All right, so facing the camera, at least I am, you don't have to be. We're gonna step out a good chunk, a good chunk wider than shoulder width apart. We're gonna go down to one side. Now, we're gonna cross over to the other side. This is a side to side squat, but we're gonna keep our head nice and level. So we're not gonna come up, we're just gonna go straight across, down and back is one. We need five sets, okay? So down, back, one, four more. Down, back, two, down, back, three, down, back, four, one more. This is the best one, down, back. See, awesome. Uh, something you can do if you're just hyper mobile and that doesn't warm your hips up at all, take a real lightweight starting like five pound dumbbell, start adding weight to it. It'll really help with that mobility. So. The next one, nice, easy, straight leg raise, opposite hand, opposite foot. Notice we're not swinging, that's cheating, right? We're using all those mus muscles that Dr. Hunt helped us activate earlier, right? So nice and easy, swing. I need 10 reps, so that's five each side, please. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and ten. Stay nice and tall, keeping that core engaged. For the next one, scoot back a little bit so you can see my feet. So we already did the calf raises, did the straight leg walk. Now again, we got 30 seconds till we're going into the match. So I need 20, real fast, double ankle pops for height. Notice. I'm not bending my legs. I'm staying straight up so I'm not bent over. All the work coming from our calves. If you're in an apartment, uh, maybe you don't slam so hard on your feet. But uh, for everybody else, this is again, getting that system primed for the fight. So I need 20 reps as fast as you can. Let's do it. There you go. Nine, 10, 10 more. So that was 20. You should be about finishing up there. Uh, last one. This is right before we're about to get in the match. You'll literally see me do this before every single fight. Standing in the ring, you're about to call Chung home. You're about to walk out. Nice, easy. High knee run. I need 20 reps from you guys. Staying tall. Making sure, okay, making sure we're getting good dorsiflexion in our ankles, okay? So I need 20 reps. Make sure we pump our arms. All right, ready, go. Okay. There you go. Should be about 20. So your chat's blowing up. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, same thing. Yeah, awesome, Molly. Yeah, I love it. And, and, and Steven, I'll, I'll manage the chat. So if there's any questions, I'll just uh, watch those and throw them to you so you, you don't have to like be trying to do double. Thank you my hero. All right, so we should be getting our heart rate up a little bit. I'm a little sweaty, so I know if I'm a little sweaty, you guys are sweaty because you guys have been doing way more work than me. Are your knees weak and are your arms heavy? Uh, no, but I vomited some of my mom's spaghetti. Yeah, well, what would you do if you had one chance or one opportunity to, to, to not have me interrupt you? I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. No, you're good. As a matter of fact, we're going to spend the remaining 30 minutes literally just parroting Eminem. So. It was a scene-by-scene scene remake of 8 Mile with Coach Hiroshi as Eminem's mom. It was weird. It got weird real fast. <laughs> you didn't have to actually beat me. It was really bad. Yeah, Jay Han will be Cheddar Bob. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, for the actual kicking part of this, we're going to focus today on slide cut. Uh, so... The couple of keys I'm going to give you on this one, especially for uh, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. Uh, before I demonstrate it, we're going to remember that first of all, all movement is going to start from the front leg. So there shouldn't ever be any pendulum action. My back foot should never touch my front foot. Uh, so front foot starts all the movement. Uh, we drive with our back foot. And then third, we bring our back foot with us. So uh, real quick, show me some hands for anybody that's ever thrown a kick. 
and landed like this in a fight. And they go, oh, great, I can't follow. And your coach is sitting in the corner doing the, yeah, yeah, more than one kick, more than one kick. Anybody? Hey, all right, yeah, a couple, uh, more than a couple. I know what's happened to me. So the problem there is they didn't bring their back foot with them. You see, if I leave my back foot behind, I land in that position. So that's the third key here. Uh, all movement starts from the front leg. We drive with the back leg, and we bring the back leg with us. So real quick, if we're going to walk through it, and you might call it something different. We're calling it cut kick. We're hitting with the bottom of our foot, right? Just like Dr. Han talked about, we've got to be strong through here and through here. It's that compression strength that brings our knee up. So we're gonna go for seven reps here. You know what, let's make it an even eight. Feeling lucky today. We're gonna go for eight reps here. Really focus on staying tall. And when I kick, you can do this on a bag. Uh, your partner, whoever you're there with, targets, doesn't matter. You don't even need something to hit. You can just focus on the technique here. But as quick as we can, we're gonna lift and drive with that kick. So lift and drive. Notice, arms are blocking. Our standard's super high. Jay Jones, Dave Hunley, all the world champions during this time, at the end of the day, they're not at home going like, yeah, I guess I'll train, but I'm not gonna block. Like, no, 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 our standard's too high. We wanna be world champions, right? So again, driving through the back leg, all motion starts here, and taking our back leg with us, we're good in cover, drive. Aiming with our heel. So we want eight good reps, I'll go through them with you. All right, so we're set up, we're bouncing, ready? Arms up, one. Reset, lift fast, right? Two. Set back up, three. There you go. Remember, I'm seeing a couple of you guys. Remember, all movement comes from that front leg first, right? Ready, set up, four. Stay nice and tall, we're covered. Five. Three more good ones on this left side. Stay nice and tall. Six. Two more. Seven. Last one, last one, best one, right? Eight. Nice. So again, before we move to the other side, all movements coming from that front leg, we're driving. And because we're dado-centric athletes these days, we're aiming with our heel, right? Not aiming with our toes, because then that sensor is not gonna connect. All right, let's do the other side. I started with my left, so we're gonna do the right leg. I know, crazy how it works like that. I'm gonna face the other way, so we won't have this wonderful back. All right, arms up, bouncing, ready? One, reset, lift first, two, Reset, three, arms, all movement from the front leg, four, reset, five, there you go, good effort, oh, yeah, somebody caught themselves, I just saw the thumbs up, all movement from that front leg, uh, what was that, six, uh, we'll go with six, all right, ready, six, two more, Last two, best two, right? Seven. And last one, ready? Eight. There you go. Nice work, everybody. I know a lot of you guys are with other people. Turn and give people high fives. If not, just give me a thumbs up. All right, so now we're gonna start to add to it. That's obviously the beginner stage of this, right? Super difficult in that there are elite fighters at the Grand Prix that will still, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. It's like, no, it all starts on that front leg. And this is for that person that's crowding us, right? We're in the match, super intense person bearing down on us. They're really close. If we go big motion, they're just gonna jam us or kick on motion. That's where this little motion comes from, a quick up and stab to keep them away. So now we're gonna go intermediate here. We're gonna add movement with it. It's like Dr. Han said, if you can't do it with no weight, you shouldn't be adding a load, right? Like if the dysfunction is bad and there to begin with, shouldn't be adding on 250 pounds. 
I say that because I'm a little fat right now, it's cold out. Uh, so now we're gonna add a theoretical load to it. So we're acting, if you're with a partner, it's even better, but if not, we can do it at the moment. Uh, we can do it by ourselves. We're gonna close the distance, then slide cut. And when I say close the distance, I mean, I'm too far away to hit the person I'm fighting. I'm closing into the right distance and then adding that cut kick in. As a matter of fact, first, before we move on to that, we're gonna do a couple reps just with the movement. This is that dot drill that Coach Tim worked on in that uh, it doesn't matter if you have the world's greatest roundhouse kick, if your movement beforehand is terrible. Just watch, if I'm fighting you, and before I throw my kick, I go, it doesn't matter how great that kick is, the movement beforehand is terrible. The person you're fighting doesn't have to be good to counter, right? So, real quick, we're gonna start right leg forward on my count. We're gonna close the distance as fast as we can. Sound good? All right, we'll go five reps. All right, ready, right leg first. We'll start at a dead standstill to make sure nobody's cheating. So, no bouncing. I want you to produce force as fast as you can and get to where you need to be. All right, arms up. One. Reset. Two. Reset. Three. Four. One more. Best one last. Last one, best one. Yeah, best one last one. We'll stick with that one. I'm gonna put it on the shirt. All right, ready? Five. There we go. Switch. Other side. All right, ready? One. Reset. Two. Making sure we're good and covered. We're not running into somebody's kicks. Ready? Three. Four. And last one. Five. There you go. Nice effort. So now we're going to put those two things together. The reason we broke it down is what we can't let happen is, first of all, the movement's slow, or even worse at this point, you close the distance and you're all out of whack. Both feet need to move at the exact same time on that one, okay? So if we move both feet at the same time, no matter what direction I'm moving, I'm ready to kick. So let's put those together. We're gonna go close the distance, slide cut. We'll go five each side on this one. Remember, this is a really high standard. So not only is the kick world class here, but the movement's world class too. So right leg first, arms up, ready? One. Arms up, stay engaged in the fight. Two. There you go. Reset. Three. Two more. Four. And last one before we switch sides. Five. There we go. All right, switch, switch stance, face the other way. I don't know how you're doing it. That's, that's your problem, that's not up to me. Left leg now, close the distance, both feet at the same time, lift and shoot in with that cut kick as fast as you can. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Reset. Make sure we got good arms, we've got that high standard, we're always coming. Three, last two, four, last one, best one, five, there you go. So again, doesn't matter how good our, uh, doesn't matter how good our kick is if the motion's bad. If the motion's bad, you can have a world-class kick. You're still gonna get kicked in the face, come back and go, oh, I guess I need to work more on my kicks. Now you need to work more on your movement. So we did beginner, that was just slide cut. Intermediate, we added the movement, getting to the target, getting in distance, just like we did with the dot drill. Then, then the kick afterwards. Now we're gonna go for advanced. We're gonna add in an extra motion. So this time, we're gonna go right leg forward. We're gonna close the distance, get in, get in our comfortable kicking distance, right? Give a hard motion to disrupt their pattern recognition because if they're used to this all day, they're already, especially world-class fighters, 
just sitting on that back leg or sitting on that front leg. The second you move in, easy points. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. I'm going to enjoy finals or I'm going to enjoy this gold medal. No, no, no. We're going to disrupt that. So close the distance. We're going to get hard motion and then straight into the slide cut. So it's three parts now. We're getting to the dot, just like Tim said. We're absorbing to stop. We're creating a little bit of a pattern disruption and then throwing that slide cut. We do five reps each side. Starting right. All right, ready? One. Reset. Two. Make sure we're still covered. Three. Four. Last one on this side. Five. There you go. All right, switch stance. We're gonna go left leg now. All right, there you go. One. Two. Pick that leg up fast. people crushing it give me a thumbs up yep sweet all right everybody's still alive clearly I did not warm up for this uh, so we went beginner intermediate advanced on offense we're gonna burn through a couple of defense um, because it's a data world we're sticking with cut kick today we'll do different stuff down the line but the important thing is that we get those basics just like dr. Han talked about correct so that way we can build on it. Makes sense? Uh, switching to defense, going with cut kick. We're gonna work in place cut kick on my count. Okay? What we're gonna focus on here, because we all know how it goes, you get the giant chasing you with cut kicks. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna stay tall, we're gonna elevate with that front leg. So driving through the toes on the back leg. We're gonna use that compression strength to bring our knee up high, and we're gonna get top position on our opponent, right? Because if somebody's cut kicking at me, and their foot is on top of me, it doesn't matter how good your cut kick is, you're not gonna beat them on that situation. So we need to get top position. So when I count one, drive through the back leg, pull that front leg up quick, drive out. We're gonna keep it simple like they're cutting at our body for now. So we're gonna go for five reps on my count, the second you hear me, I know there might be a little bit of a delay, but the second you hear me, you have to be moving, right? We need fast reaction. All right, right leg, arms covered, making sure we're good and blocking. Ready? One, two, three, four. Last one, best one, right? Five. Notice, everybody stand on one leg and straighten your knee as hard as you can. How hard is it to balance doing that? You feel like somebody could walk and push you over pretty easy? So just like this with the cut kick, we want a little bit of a bend in our hip, a little bit of a bend in our knee, and a little bit of a bend in our ankle until we drive through, just like the mobility and the dot drill that Tim went through. So if we load up our posterior chain like that, it makes us a heck of a lot harder to knock off balance. Left leg, same thing on my count, five. Ready, one, two, three, four. Last one, best one, five. There you go, Max, turn to your partner. Uh, high five your imaginary friend if you have to. It's all right. We're all here together. Nobody knows. There's nothing touching. Sorry? It's not, we're not touching. This looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be the, the coronavirus high five. It's great. Uh, so that was the basic version of it. Uh, now we're going to add movement to it again, just like Dr. Han talked about. Make sure everything's functional. Make sure we can actually do the kick 
and then we add some movement with it. So on offense, we went close the distance, slide cut. On this one, right leg first, we're gonna open and then slide cut. So we're getting out of the way of their kick and then tagging them for the easy two points. What we need to focus on here is getting into the ground. Because again, it's just like if I'm following kicks, if my feet take forever to get down into the ground, it doesn't matter how quick the takeoff is. We have to get into the ground as quick as possible. Almost view it as an angle. We're not going up and back. We're going straight into the ground and then cut kick. Making sure we're covered the whole time. Since we're getting out of the way of a kick, it's all right to let that front arm out a little bit, absorb some of the cut, okay? Right leg first. Ready, one, set, two, three, four, last one, five, there you go, nice. Switch stance, we're gonna go other side. Remember, if you saw me on that one, I made a mistake on number three. Our feet shouldn't come together, right? Feet move at the exact same time, so that way we're always ready to kick. Left leg, five reps, please. Ready? One, two, three, two more, four. Last one, please. Last one, best one. Five. There you go. Nice. So, beginner. Defensive cut kick, we're loading up that posterior chain. Intermediate, adding the movement, so we're getting out of the way of their kick and then countering. Number three, we're building on what we did with offense. So we're gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna give a hard motion, again, disrupting that pattern recognition room. Then front leg cut kick. So again, out of the way, hard motion, cut kick. This is that person that they miss their first kick, and before they can throw that second one, they're giving them emotions. That way they oh, just hesitate even of a fraction of a second. So five reps each side, please. Right leg first. Ready? One. Get set. Two. Three. Four. Last one, best one. Five. There you go, nice. Switch legs. Let's jump right into the left leg. Ready? One. Two. Three. Two more. Two more. Four. Last one, best one, right? And five. There you go. Nice work, everybody. Turn. High fives, all that good stuff. So again, doesn't really matter. We show up at seminars all the time, and we'll have the coach say, oh, man, uh, they really need to work on their 360 falling out of the clinch when there's four seconds left. Very much. Happens all the time. And it's like, no, man, you need to have a world-class cut kick. Yep. You need to be able to score out of the clinch. You need to have a good punch. You need to have good movement. It's like, you have those four or five things, you've already got more than most people at the Grand Prix. A lot of people at the Grand Prix now are good at one thing, right? And it's like, we see those fighters all the time. Not gonna name any names, but it's like, they pick up their foot and that's all they do for six minutes. It's like, a couple of years ago when we were getting ready for the Grand Prix final, I had to fight a really talented fighter from France who was number one in the Olympic rankings at the time. And beforehand we were scouting video of him and it was like, after about three matches, somebody went, hey, what happens if you fight him left leg back? And like, we all kind of sat there and went, there's no video of anybody fighting him close stance. Like, what happens? And it was like, I went in with the mentality of, okay, like, 
maybe he's got a weapon on this side that I don't know about. Like, that's why people are avoiding it. And it's like, this guy was number one in the Olympic rankings. And by switching his stance, fighting him with my left leg back, he couldn't score. And it went from being this super difficult match to, all right, make sure you don't give up anything stupid. Keep your head out of the way. And it's like, yeah. if that's an Olympic number one, the path to success in this has gotten a lot clearer. Very, and that's having, having those extra expanding your tool set right now because it's hard to learn that new thing. Like, I did the same thing before. This is not to date myself. 2003 Pan Am game trials, I had to fight, learn to fight left leg back. There was a fighter that, same thing, front leg, left leg. Jay knows, right? It was like, his fast was so good. And so it took me eight months of not competing to learn to fight left leg back and, and open to do it. I remember I switched into close stance one time and he just went, bink, and hit me. I was like, nope, sorry, not today. Like, but, but if my point is, if we don't treat this like the off season, we don't master these basic parts and expand our skill set, and we go in just like, I'm going to clinch and moon kick, clinch and pot, like, that's, you're going to come back out of this with the same skill set. Most people are. You know, the champion's mindset, seeing this as the opportunity. Right, this is the opportunity time. And uh, every turn, think about this, every tournament you guys have ever been to, think about the worst tournament you ever went to. The worst run, the most unfairly officiated, horrible tournament. And someone won. Every turn, every turn had a winner. Someone found a way to win that day. No matter how bad and how crooked and how you fought at 3 a.m. and there was no mats and they didn't have whatever. No food. Someone won that tournament. So why can't you be the one to come out of this uh, experience, let's call it, uh, and go, hey, this is – I'm going to challenge myself. When they see me again in two weeks, two months, whatever, now you're committed on your goals. You're that focused on those parts. Um, let's open up to a little are, – are you – Stephen, that, that, was, that was the last drill, yes? Yeah, absolutely. I, the only thing I would add is just remember that standard. Like, yeah, it's fine. We get together today, and we'll get together again probably next weekend and make this a regular thing. But if, if this was good, yeah. Yeah, we can't be there to enforce the standard every day. Uh, and, and in fairness, like, there's, what, uh, like 51 of them right now? And so it's like I can only see so many screens at a time, right? So it's like for all I know, number 49 is over there like – all right, taking it easy. Like, we can't uh, – we can only show you the standard. You have to help us enforce it. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I totally agree. Um, well, show of hands was who here – I challenged you guys at the beginning to get one takeaway. Who had one takeaway from today? Raise your hand. One thing that you're like, this was valuable for me. That's, oh, that's awesome. And hopefully that's worth your time. You can put it into play. Um, we want to do a little Q&A right now, so we have time for a couple questions. Uh, you can all unmute people. I guess it's going to be dangerous, but I guess I'll unmute you. <laughs> or we can type it up in the comments. If you have that, would be great if you have a question there. Let me see if I can unmute if that's not a total train wreck. Or I'll, I'll allow you to unmute yourself. Let's see if you can unmute yourself. World class movement is critical to a world class kick. Absolutely. That's great. Um, so you can unmute your audio if you have, do have a question. You can come up and uh, do it here. We'll you have a question. Comment. This open floor. Anyone? Will be the next session. So Timothy Ross, you enjoyed it. Should we do this again? I'm like I'm like a Hulk Hogan on WWE. I grew up. I'm like I need to. Hear you. <laughs> but yeah, right. Should we do this again? This is the Sunday service. And I know that everyone's training. definitely need to do this again. Yeah. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So then I guess we'll do it again. Uh, Zoom has a room cap of 100 people for us. I can get a bigger room for everyone. It hosts like 500 or 1,000 people, but it's 10 times more for Zoom. It's like, but I'm willing to do it if we can, like, I don't mind if that's going to help people uh, to do it. So what I would ask, I guess, is two things in uh, there. One, post your uh, takeaway on Facebook and tag us. I want to know, because we're virtual, I need to know what you learned. Otherwise, we're going to come teach you the same thing next week if we don't think you got it. And I want to make this where we're like, again, in two months, I want you to think of where you want to be. Two months, where you want to be. So post what you learned, tag us, tag Dr. Hahn, tag Steven, tag me, tag the juice, please, so we can give you feedback. We've done that after every camp. 
if you've worked out with us, you know we actually look and we reply and we are like giving you feedback uh, there. Uh, so I would ask one, you do that, and two, that'll help get more people in. And we can do that. It's like we can almost make our own like little mini, mini Olympic training center uh, together. And that's how this camp started. The domination camp started because for the Olympics, they didn't have an OTC program. They didn't have any of this stuff. And so we looked and we're like, well, we, we know this. Dr. Han knows this. I know, we know the parts. We'll put it back together in our own way. So I like to do that, but have a big crew because then we have things like accountability. Then we have things like virtual training. We have a shared experience. These things that we're normally limited by. This has leveled the playing field incredibly. Incredibly. Right? So we can actually do something really special right now that normally uh, that wouldn't be the case because you'd be like, oh, well, we have a Saturday. We have a, we have a state ranking level four tournament. And we have to go get the – no one here is flying to Arizona States for weigh-in points. You know? It's not happening. It is time to train. It's time to get better and to push ourselves, and, and that's how we do it. So uh, I would love to do that. Tag us on there. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. J. Wan Lim, or Miss. Yes, exactly. I, uh, I'm glad you're here. But this, like we were talking online, this stuff's so good. Tag us on uh, Facebook or the gram of what you, your takeaway is what you learned. And then next Sunday, I want to I wanna try and get forced to have to get the big room. We hit our cap at 100 today. I think a few people didn't get on over the course of this, but you know, that's how it goes. Champions mindset, you found a way to be here. Dr. Hahn, anything to add or, or there and Steven, I'll let you guys kind of go around. No, I, I think I'm just, first and foremost, I'm grateful for, for Tim and Steve. Um, I'm grateful for our, this martial arts community, right? This is our, this is our opportunity to give back, uh, to help you guys in, in a tough time. And, and I always tell people that, yeah, it's tough for us, our businesses, our home life, but there's always someone out there that's um, even in a worse situation. So, you know, we're here to help all you guys. And, and like Tim said, you know, tag us, ask, ask questions. Um, so that gives us an idea of what to bring you in the future. Um, super excited. I'm, you always have to look at the silver lining and it was kind of funny that like my life has been crazy the last two years, working for a professional soccer team, running an office. <laughs> Um, and then, but you always have to look at the bright side, like, like these two guys are saying, and what is the silver lining? I get to back, I get to come back to Taekwondo a bit. Um, I get to share, uh, not only the Taekwondo lot, Taekwondo knowledge, but what I've kind of gotten from soccer and then kind of integrating that with what, um, we've been doing all along. So, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity to help you guys. So thank you guys. Yeah. I'm so grateful you coming. Mean, literally I messaged you last night. It was even on our promo uh, stuff because I'm going, he's got a newborn son and a, a toddler, I don't know, he's almost three and a wife at home. So, and a, and a business he's still running and, you know, still trying to do stuff that I'm like, I, you know, and stuff's so good. I got to get it out there. Like I just, you heard all the things I said were like things he told me. So uh, I always say we want to stand on the shoulders of giants. It helps us get there faster. So I'm grateful to have such smart people around me and such dedicated people uh, like you all to be here because that makes us raise our game. You want to see my notes? Like, you think we're not fired up for this stuff? I'll turn the screen around and it's like notes of like, here's everything I'm trying to get together to do. So it's getting me to raise my game for you guys. Uh, Tim, can I add one more thing? Nope, add 10 more things. It's either you or Steve that said, treat this like the, like the off season. Yeah. So what do you do in the off season? You work on your weaknesses. And now you have to, you have to look at yourself objectively, not get emotional because of all this stuff that's going around, be objective with your own game and figure out what it is that you need. Do you need more strength? Do you need more stretching? Do you need less Taekwondo? And Jay, Jay here, here's the funny yeah. thing. Do most people need progressions or regressions? Regressions. Most absolutely. People, all, everyone in the, in CrossFit gyms, I do all the CrossFit gyms got shut down at martial arts schools. So all their members that are trying to do, I want to do one rep max clean and jerk and they're pressing their stuff out and they're in these bad positions. They're all having to have regressions and guess what's happening? Within a week, they're like feeling better. Right. Because we're like, oh, you have mobility. They would never do mobility in the gym. Their cross right. are like, how much you squat, bro? Let's get it. And they finally have had to like 
chill, be out of that sympathetic state and get into a parasympathetic, that's fight or flight or relax, right? And they're doing better. So same, right? Like we've analyzed that in most people, it's these small parts. I'll send out the performance funnel uh, and next time I'll, I'll see if I can share my screen with it. Maybe I can have it here. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the performance funnel next week. That'll be a topic we'll do. But the top right. is mindset. The top is not how fast can you run? That's at the very bottom. And everyone here, raise your hand if you've beaten someone who was faster than you. Raise your hand, say aye. Let's say if you've beaten someone who was stronger than you, say aye. They're in better shape than you. But have you beaten someone? Have you lost to someone? And be honest, have you lost to someone that was mentally tougher than you? I have, and that stinks, right? So we know where the game is played, and that's what Adron's talking about, is finding those parts, being really focused there. And like I said, just if you watch the replay, you can just hear, uh, go through with a notepad now, and, and you'll have uh, a, year of, a year of ideas to implement. So uh, thank you, Doc. Let me cut you off. If you, have, if you have more to say, go ahead. <laughs> yes, every time no. you see something that inspires Steve's, you. Know, Steve's yeah. turn. <laughs> Oh, I already muted myself. Now, um, <laughs> the only thing I would add from here that we always touch on is, okay, so what do we do from here? Like, yeah, we had this great session. Uh, coming up on two hours, like I think we were originally planning on this being like 69. Yeah, right. something like that, super quick. But uh, all three of us are excited and we want to share as much information as possible. But I mean, what are we going to do from this point? First of all, we need to get protein, right? Like. We put in good work, especially before the start of the actual work week. Like, again, this was a supplementary workout. So we need that protein. Uh, we need to get water in our system, obviously. Tonight, when we go to sleep, uh, as dark of a room as possible, that doesn't mean staring at your phone. You need to let your mind actually, re actually rest so your body can recover. But most importantly, uh, maybe not most importantly, up there, though, uh, how are we going to remember what we learned two weeks from now? We got to write it down, right? Like uh, at the 2016 Olympics, every morning I was in the elevator with Michael Phelps. And it was just because our training times were basically the same time, two completely different venues, but because it, 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 yeah, yep. It got to be like, uh, uh, oh, hey, man, how's it going? Like I didn't ever, ever, didn't ever even introduce myself. But the funny part about it is like Tim hammered in me years ago, you need to have a training journal. You need to write down what you learn. And it was like, one of the mornings on the elevator, Michael Phelps was writing in a training journal. And it's like, he's a swimmer. Like, what do you learn? Like, swim faster? Like, I did not understand that. But it's like, if a swimmer needs a training journal to remember what he's training, it goes double for us, if not triple. Because Taekwondo is so much harder. And it's like anything in life. Uh, if you don't keep a training journal, who remembers what they learned at practice three weeks ago? I wouldn't, I mean, this is my job and I wouldn't remember it. That's why I have a training journal. So maybe the most important thing of all, yes, we're gonna send out the video to everybody so you'll have a copy of it, but you need to actually write down your big takeaways for today. Yep, that's, that's, uh, that's how it starts. You take them around, now it's circular. You learn it, you de-stress, you come back, our body comes back stronger, now we apply those new things. Next week, we have new stuff. We build it more. Yeah. You have that aha yeah. moment. Now, now it's certain. Yeah. Now we're keeping this yeah. over and over. That's how people, when they say this, this will be my final thing I'll say, and we're going to hop here. So I hear how people say, I'm doing the same stuff as so and so. I'm doing the same thing. I say, No, you're not. Because all they're seeing is, I did, the, I, we, did we each did 10 front kicks. We each, I did cut kicks like Steven. That's part of this. It's all the parts we want to do, right? Are you going, are you learning from it? Are you analyzing, are you putting it into practice? Are you coming in ready in a ready state? And Dr. Han says to come train for the next session. That's where we start to uh, scale and stack. And that's the real magic that champions know, that Michael Phelps knows, because that's the habit. That's what he does. He's not doing it, oh, I'll write in a journal until I get good and then I'll stop because I'm good now. Those are the habits that make us champions. So uh, we're going to build on that next week. I am honored on behalf of Dr. Hahn and uh, Professor Stephen Landon, we're going to give you a title too, uh, to, to have done this with you guys. I think this was, a, I don't know anyone who's had almost 100 people uh, on one of these yet. So I'm super grateful for that. Next week, I put up in the comments, have your school and students or friends email me. We're going to have a new room. I have to get a bigger room. It'll be a new link to Tim at JuiceCompound.com. I would really, and I mean, I would love to have a thousand people on here and i would like to to bring zoom to their knees and break they'll crush them right 
Uh, but I, I'm serious. We want to really help and be of service to you guys. We hope it was great. Tag us in that post. I want to see what you guys can learn so we can upgrade next week's session. All right, guys. Thanks so much. High fives all around. And uh, virtual high five. Stay safe. Okay, we'll get out of this soon. Mindset's most important.